everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Josh and oh my gosh you guys, I am so excited to finally be doing this video. It has been forever and a day since you and I have sat down and taken a look at a watch together and I really apologize for that. But today we are making up for it in a big way because we have a brand new Seiko to look at. This, you guys, is a watch that, oh my gosh, I have been waiting for and wanting all year long, it feels like. Today, we are taking a look at the brand new Seiko King Samurai SRPE37. This is the white variant with the black bezel and black rubber strap. Oh my gosh, you guys, I can't even believe I, I have this in my hands because it has been the longest wait ever. Oh my gosh, it is gorgeous. It is absolutely stunning. I am so excited to finally have this guy. I have been waiting for this literally all summer, and this is the first time, honestly, that I have ever... What's well, the first time? It's probably the first time I've paid full price for a Seiko, first of all, and it's definitely the first time that I have ever actually pre-ordered a Seiko. Um, as soon as they announced it, I called up um, a jeweler in Manhattan that I have worked with in the past, gave him my information, gave him my credit card, put a deposit down. I told him the minute you get it in, I want it. Uh, so he called me on Friday, a couple Fridays ago. I said, I've got it. I gave him my credit card information. He charged me for it and shipped it out that very same day. And it's been, uh, the rest is history. I just, <laughs> I just, I'm so happy with this guy. It's insane. So as you probably know, given the fact that you're watching this video, the Samurai is now the second model following the turtle to get the king treatment, which means that Seiko has given this guy some really nice upgrades, like replacing the Hardlex crystal with sapphire, and the stainless steel bezel with an engraved ceramic bezel. And retail price to retail price, these guys are only about $100 to $150 more than your standard Samurai or Turtle. So it really is a great value proposition when you take into account all the different upgrades that these guys get. And by the way, you guys, I didn't actually know this until I got mine in hand, but it seems like all of the King Samurais are being made in Japan, and you can see the stamp here around 7 o'clock, which is a really nice upgrade over, again, your standard Samurai, which generally comes out of Malaysia or Thailand or something like that. Again, at a very small increase in price over your standard Samurai. Now, as you guys know, if you've been with me here on my channel, you know that I have and love my standard issue Samurai, and this guy is always a favorite of mine. Every summer I reach for this all the time. It is absolutely the perfect watch to take boating, to take to the lake, to take swimming, to take to the beach. It's just perfect and I love it so much. And I have to say, getting this King Samurai out of the box, the most interesting thing to me was actually that even beyond the big upgrades, the headline upgrades, so the ceramic bezel and the sapphire crystal, every facet of this watch has been in some way upgraded or fine-tuned. Everything is just a little bit cleaner, a little bit sharper on the King Samurai. Case in point is the crown here. If we look at the difference between the two, the standard Samurai has just kind of a, a matte finished unsigned crown. And the King Samurai is not signed either. But if you look at the finishing on that, the top of the crown here, it's actually got this kind of radial brushing, which gives you some really beautiful light play. And these are things that you wouldn't really notice unless you had both side by side like I do. But even the finishing on the case, the edges, these beautiful chamfered edges here on the King Samurai are just a little bit sharper, a little bit more crisp. They feel just a little bit better in the hand. And again, at not a huge price increase over your standard Samurai for all of this additional work and detail. And so with that, that's what I actually wanted to do with you guys today is take a look at all of the different details and take a look in depth at what makes a King Samurai a King Samurai. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so the first thing you'll probably notice when you get this guy in the hand is actually the bezel. And it is so incredible, you guys, how well Seiko did this. This bezel is not just impressive at this price point because again, this watch is only like five, 600 bucks. This is impressive on the whole. I can think of five to 10 other watches off the top of my head that costs two and three times what this guy does that do not do a ceramic bezel this well. This guy is beautifully done. So we have a high gloss polish over the top of the ceramic and then all of the markings and indices are engraved and then filled with paint. And what that does 
is creates just a super high contrast bezel, so easy to read, any light, anything like that. Even when you've got a lot of reflection and splash going on, you can always still make out those indices. And if you tilt your wrist, again, you get the interplay between that high gloss black and the engraved indices. It's just, it's incredible, you guys, I can't. This is the kind of thing that makes a watch for me. Now, the other thing I love about this bezel is, and you guys know this about me if you have been with me here on my channel, I love high gloss blacks on watches. And the reason I love that so much is because when you apply a high gloss finish to that black, all of a sudden it becomes deep and dark and rich and inky and looks like a piece of onyx or something like that. It's just such a high-end thing that, again, just elevates this watch, this rather low-end watch, to a level way, way above your standard samurai. If you guys watched my Longines Hydro Conquest video that I did not too long ago, <laughs> I gushed about that bezel as well. And I really do think that this is on the same level as that guy. The finish and the attention to detail on it, the high gloss, the engraving, the, the paint fill that fills the engraving, very similar execution on that Longines, and I think it's done just as well here on the Seiko. And again, that Longines is about three times the price of this Seiko. So really, really incredible that Seiko was able to do it at this price point. Now, I do have one itty bitty little complaint about the way that Seiko did this bezel, and that is that they set the ceramic insert into a metal ring with a lip on either side. And that's not a bad thing because I'm sure that that makes it a little bit less likely to come off or crack or chip or whatever. But what it means is that there's now a silver ring, a very thin silver ring between the bezel and the sapphire crystal. And I wish that they had done actually what they do on the standard samurai and much like the Longines where the bezel, the ceramic insert actually sits flush with the crystal. I think that would have been so much cleaner and, again, elevated it to a level above, even above this. Um, the silver ring, it's really not bad and it's really not noticeable, especially on this white version. But I think if it had sat flush with that beautiful sapphire crystal, it just would have looked cleaner. And on that note, let's talk about the crystal because that's the second big upgrade to the King Samurai. Previously, one of the biggest differences between lower end prospects, so something like the Samurai and the Turtle, versus higher end prospects, so something like the SBDC series and the Sumo, was that the lower end models all did with the 4R movement and Hardlex glass. That was kind of the pairing. And then the higher end ones got the 6R movement and Sapphire glass. So for the King models to get both the Sapphire crystal and the ceramic bezel is really, really interesting. And by the way, you guys, we do still have the 4R movement. That is not one of the upgrades, and I'm not going to get into it just because it's not new. And I think by now everybody knows about the 4R movement from Seiko. It's a workhorse. It's reliable. It's great. And it's perfect for this watch and this class of watch. The crystal here is absolutely gorgeous. It's really, really nice. Visual clarity is great. And as with most of Seiko's sapphire crystals, again, we do have a layer of AR coating on the underside of the crystal. So again, it's not the most effective AR coating, but what I like about it being on the inside is that when the watch catches the light just right, you get this quick flash or sheen of blue that washes over the dial and it just looks so high end and so premium. And that's a perfect example of the small details on this King Samurai that elevate it above like your standard issue Samurai. The other thing that Seiko has been doing recently that is relatively controversial in the marketplace is they have been adding a Cyclops onto just about everything that they've been putting out in the Prospects line. So the new Tuna has one, I believe. The new uh, Monster has one. The Alpinist has one. The King Turtle had one. Now we've got one on here. Okay, taking a quick pass over the dial here. Seiko has, again, made small upgrades, small detail changes to the dial here. We have this beautiful, what I like to call the tile dial. If you look at this guy really closely, each of these squares actually has beveled edges. And when those, those squares with the edges meet, you get this really beautiful kind of diamond or cross type uh, intersection. It's really, really well done. So again, little design change, but huge impact on the overall presence of this piece. 
And finally, finishing off the dial here, as to be expected, this guy has Super Luminova, which is Seiko's legendary loom. It is great. It is awesome. One funny thing to mention about the King Samurai, though, is actually because we have a white dial on this guy, the loom is so bright when it's fully charged that you actually light up the whole dial. It almost looks like there's an LED, you know, backlight in there or something like that. It's so interesting and so funny because you can actually see not just the indices, but the entire white kind of interior surface of this watch. And finally, this last upgrade is not from Seiko per se. This is actually something I added on as soon as I got the watch. This is a Crafter Blue rubber dive strap. Um, I've got one here also on my orange samurai, and I have a whole video if you want more information just about the strap. I thought the black worked really, really well here. I would really, really love if they made a white version to go with the white dial on this guy. I would buy that in a heartbeat. So Crafter Blue, if you're listening, can you do that for me, please? Um, these guys are just the best rubber dive straps out there. They are so well made. They are genuine rubber. They feel great. They feel just like actually the Omega uh, rubber dive straps that you can get for Omega divers. And because of Seiko's huge cult following, Crafter Blue actually makes custom versions with fitted end links here. And so what that does is it allows the strap to sit at exactly the right angle to balance the watch, the case of the watch, on your wrist. And that's something that I actually don't care for with Seiko's silicone dive straps. They tend to be, because they're so lightweight, they tend to be overwhelmed by the heft and the weight and kind of the presence of the chunky Prospects cases. And so what I found in wearing those is there's not enough balance between the strap and the case. And so that is solved for me by putting a Crafter Blue strap on them. They've got straps that are made for the Turtle, they have them made for the SKX and the Samurai in addition to others. I order these guys from Strap Code, and Strap Code also has a number of really, really nice, really well-made uh, link bracelets also with custom end links for various Seiko watches. So if you get this guy and you want to be you want it to be more of like a dressy diver or something that you can wear to the office, definitely give those a look because I think one of those really nice link bracelets would actually accent this watch really nicely as well. Quick update from the flight deck. I actually did end up pulling the trigger on the Hexad bracelet with the wetsuit extension. Um, this one just looked like such a great fit for the King Samurai. So I will do another video when that guy comes. I'm super excited. I think it'll accent this piece just perfectly. So now that we've covered all the upgrades, let's talk about how the King Samurai fits in the marketplace and how you should approach it as a purchase. Now, historically, if you had $500 to spend on a serious diver, you were really either going south to something like a standard Samurai or a low-end Prospects or north to an entry-level Swiss diver. And regardless of which way you went there, you still weren't getting a piece that really felt like a premium product. You know, the Japanese do a great diver for $300, don't get me wrong, I love them, but there's only so much that you can expect for that price. The Swiss, meanwhile, don't seem to think you deserve a nicely finished watch unless you're willing to spend closer to $1,000. And the sub-$1,000 Tissot Seastar versus the $1,600 Longines Hydro Conquest is a great example of that. And I know that there are other watches out there that are at this price point, but in general, they're going to be from, you know, B-tier brands, or they're going to be quartz watches or something like that. So all in all, there isn't much competition in this segment. And if you've got the five to $600 to spend on a serious diver, I really think that this guy and the King Turtle are your ways to go. And again, with the King Samurai, you are getting a made in Japan product, just like a Swiss diver would be made in Switzerland. Now, Seikos do tend to go on sale quite frequently, especially here in the U.S. at Macy's. You guys know how much I love buying Seikos from Macy's. And although the King Samurai is too new to tell at this moment here in late 2020, I do often see the King Turtle on sale for sometimes as low as $400. And I do expect that as the King Samurai begins to proliferate in the market and it becomes more available, that we will start to see it being discounted like that as well. So if you're not willing to pay the full price to have it right now, I think you should bide your time and I'm sure it will reward you in the long run and you will get a better deal than I did. So with that, you guys, I'm just going to wrap it up here. You obviously know by now how I feel about the King Samurai. This is just a phenomenal watch at a phenomenal price. It's just, I, I love this watch so much. It is absolutely going to be one of my most worn watches, I think, through the next year. Um, 
questions, comments, leave them downstairs. I always do try to get back to you guys as quickly and as thoroughly as I can, uh, answer any questions you may have to the best of my ability. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and we will talk again soon.